Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we are gonna tell a little travel story. I say a little one, this is actually probably one of the weirdest, most ridiculous travel stories I have. And I completely forgot to even document this process at all on YouTube, mainly because I didn't really want to put the guy who I helped on YouTube with his situation. Now the sun is setting behind me. Um, it is a gorgeous day out in London. I've got my hood up because it is very cold. It's about one degree. Take this back one year ago. Google Maps. This is Koh Tao. The blue dot is the island. Yesterday we were down at the John Suan viewpoint, which is where Freedom Beach is down there. Today, we are gonna go to this place. We have to go to the middle of the island it is a really, really fun place to go. There's like a little strip if you want to go out partying. You can basically do the entire coast of the island in one afternoon and chill out on some beaches in hammocks like you can see me doing here. And my entire routine whilst I was in Koh Tao was doing this in the day, reading books in the morning, editing the videos we shot in the morning as well from the day before. And then in the afternoon, we were chilling on the beach, meeting people, chatting to people. And then in the evening, we'd go out on the strip, have a few drinks, those Thai buckets again, and uh, go out. Now, there's a lot of tourists in Koh Tao. It is a tourist-focused island, as are the majority of the islands in Thailand and pretty much anywhere now in Southeast Asia. And there was one evening where we were out. It was Lawrence, Jesse, Brian, and I. Hey there, this is Brian Goldstein. I am the uh, agent of Yaha the Unicorn. That Brian. So I was walking home, and it just so happened that as I was walking down the little street along the beach near where I was staying, I just happened to see a guy who is shouting for help in English up against the wall, being beaten to a pulp. I mean, punches flying, kicks to the ribs, kicks to the stomach by four much smaller Thai guys. Thai blokes, they may not be very tall on the whole as an average. I'm not being rude or anything. They're averagely a lot shorter than I am at six foot two and a half. And this other guy, the English guy, was probably a good six foot one, six foot two probably as well. He was getting beaten to a pulp. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm hearing someone cry for help in a language that I understand, or in any language really, if someone's clearly in distress, I'm not just gonna walk past and forget that I've seen anything. I've obviously gone to try and help him. Even though there's four Thai guys, I'm already putting myself into a bit of a predicament, a bit of a situation. Fortunately for me, I didn't really need to do too much in order to get them to actually stop attacking this chap. I actually don't remember this guy's name. I only gave him my details, we'll get onto that. Turns out this guy has had a tattoo. He is not happy with the tattoo. He is extremely intoxicated. He is trying to fight with the guys who have given him the tattoo because he didn't like it. Now, I don't know about you, but when you get a tattoo, it doesn't just disappear if you tell them you don't like it. That's something you pretty much sell yourself into when you agree to go under the needle and get the tattoo in the first place. So the guy doesn't really have a leg to stand on in terms of why he's annoyed if it wasn't exactly what he asked for and it wasn't what it looked like before they actually put the needle in. I can understand the frustration, but these Thai guys didn't like it. He'd obviously said something offensive that had upset them and all of a sudden, this guy is beaten to a pulp. And I mean, his shoulders popped out on his right side. I'm grabbing my left. His shoulders popped out on his right side. His face is bloody. He's got sand all over him because they've thrown him down onto the ground. He's in a really bad way. Let's stop that story just there and have a little sub story. The night before, I'm eating some pad thai. It's the end of the night. It's about half one, two in the morning. Bit of an early night. Eating my pad thai with my friend Jesse and Lawrence. And all of a sudden, another English guy. You know, there's people from all over Europe, America, Canada, Australia. Another English guy is giving it this. What are you like, Sam? Huh? Giving it large, as they say. Trying to... Well, the old supply mall, wouldn't you? Sam, what? You're red. You're not Sam, what? fantastic. Just as it happens, he's made eye contact with myself and Jesse, and all of a sudden, his, in his intentions are not to just antagonise everyone and just chat a little bit of crap. Do you want Sam? I'll give it yeah. He's actually just targeting Jesse and I now. And it's got to the point where he's trying to come up to us. He's starting to push around a little bit. We're just hands off. You know, we're just trying to eat some nice pad thai at the end of the night. Nothing doing. 10, 15 minutes after this, he's given up. He he'll, he'll fight us if he sees us again. Don't quite understand that. He, he had the chance there and then if he really wanted to. But he didn't. And he's walked off and he's... Still shouting down the road, giving it all this. Don't think anything of it. Swip it back round. Swip it. Swap it back round to the day where I meet the guy who's been beaten up. 
I'm asking him where his hotel room is. I'm asking him where he's staying so we can get him to bed. Maybe even, probably not go to bed. He probably needs some medical attention, but let's get him to his hotel so he can get his wallet, he can get his money, he can get his cards, he can get his identification. And then he can think about hopefully going back to a hospital. Now we've made it to his hotel, taken him up the stairs and we put him into his bed. He's in a really bad way. We're talking like he, his shoulders completely popped out. So he needs some serious medical attention. Can't stay, can't stay. I've got to go to the hospital. As we have walked him back out of his hotel room with his identification this time, guess who walks up the stairs and sees me with his friend taking him to the hospital with his friend beaten up. Our man Basil from the night before. He's seen us and he's saying, what the f*** are you doing with this f*** and all of this? And I'm thinking this could not have got any worse. Not only have I got myself in a situation where I'm kind of now looking after a stranger, but his mate, Denzel, who wants to fight me, is happens to be his best friend who he's ditched to get this tattoo, which has left him in the mess in the first place. So I'm thinking, okay, there's one guy who's already been beaten up. Now it's... Uh, it's my turn to have a fight with his friend because after last night, he's not gonna wanna see me trying to help his friend. Maybe if he if he sees his friends in a bad way, he'll forget about what he was saying to me last night and he'll look after his friend. I'm off the hook, I've done my thing, I've helped him out, now his friend can deal with him. Keep shouting, he keeps shouting, he doesn't wanna help his friend, he's having a go at his friend for leaving him on the strip on his own to go and get this tattoo, completely oblivious of his friend's shoulder. I keep touching this side, it was this side. You can see the photos right now guy's in a bad way. We've got down onto the street and I'm saying to the guy, he's starting to get a bit more pushy and shovey with me again at this point. And I'm saying, look, I don't really care about whatever issue it is you have with me. I've never said a single word wrong to you. I've never done anything wrong to you. You've clearly got an attitude and an anger problem that you're trying to take out on me because I don't know, maybe you think you can beat me in a punching fight, whatever the reason is. He's still having a go at me and he's still shouting at his friend. At this point, I've said, look, let's just get your mate into a taxi if they're gonna take him or into a car, let's take him to the hospital, let's get him cleaned up, and then hopefully you can start your holiday fresh in the morning and everyone can be happy. This is the point where everything gets beyond mental and beyond my comprehension as a, I'd like to say a normal human being. His friend has started swinging punches. Not at me, at his best friend, who has already got a pop shoulder and a battered face. He is swinging like a madman, punching his friend, in the face just because he left him on the strip and went to get a dodgy tattoo on his own now at this point i'm thinking what the hell do i do now i'm here i'm trying to get him a taxi to take him to hospital his best friend who he happens to have just started a trip with for six months worth of traveling has already tried to start a fight with me half of the strip in kotal because he's not managed to get his fight he's beating up his best friend after me picking him up and throwing him off of his friend and then getting his mate and throwing him in the taxi and having to fend him off, we get our man who's been beaten up to the hospital. While it's broken, you need to straighten it now. Now as he arrives at the hospital, the, the nurses who take one look at him and say, oh, we need to fix his nose and we need to fix his shoulder. And I'm thinking, great, brilliant. Do I stay here and wait? Because obviously his mate's now beating him up. So his mate's not gonna be coming to help him because he's angry that he went to get a tattoo. I've been with him this long and I've gone through this much with him. I might as well stay and hope that he gets seen in the hospital. Now they demand an upfront payment. They wouldn't want to see him, they wouldn't want to treat him, they wouldn't even want to wipe up his wounds without an upfront payment. Now it turns out the guy's looked in his wallet, he's lost all of his bank cards, and he's got the equivalent of about five pounds in Thai cash. Muggins steps up. Okay, you know what? I'll take your name, I'll take your number, I've helped you this far. I'm pretty sure that we're well acquainted now, and I think you owe me one. I will pay for you to get scene because otherwise you're going to be in serious trouble send me a message give me a call in the morning or give me a call tomorrow send me a facebook message and uh you can pay me back look after yourself 150 quid in medical expenses now he didn't have any travel insurance so that wasn't ever going to help he told me in well english that i can only describe as being broken that he didn't have any travel insurance and that he was gonna to have to pay for it himself but he didn't have any money on him so here I am picking up the bill. I straight my nose. Straight my nose. Straighten. Please straighten my nose. 
I'm gonna receive my money back the next day because I've helped him out, I've done a good deed. Now, here I am on the 20th of January, 2019. Not only do I not have my 150 pounds back, I didn't ever receive a single message from our man who was beaten up by four Thai guys, saved by me, and then beaten up by his best friend, saved and paid for by me. Now, I don't know if I fully believe in karma. I think I do. I have a funny feeling that that guy's six months of travel was cut very, very short. And he's probably now working a job he hates, with people he hates, probably hating himself a little bit too, because he's made some very, very dreadful decisions, and he's probably not a very nice person. I think I have earned the right to make that judgment now. But anyway, that is the story of the man I paid for and helped in Thailand who never even bothered to send me a text to say thank you. That being said, I would always say that if you see someone in distress, always try your best to help. I thought it was the best thing to do. I thought, you know, I could get hurt here, but I can see this guy is seriously in trouble. And then the whole added events of his friend coming in and causing a scene and then beating him up, breaking his nose even more beyond my comprehension. And I hope that I never experience anything like that while I'm traveling again. I certainly won't be as silly as to, to pay for somebody uh, with as little information as I had. I did try and go back to the hotel to see if I could speak to the bloke, to see if I could get the money back, and just to see how he was, secondly, and just as importantly, I guess, never anything in return. And uh, I will not say the guy's name. Uh, if you're watching this, mate, I hope you uh, cut your trip short because your mate is a knobhead and you shouldn't have ever gone traveling with him in the first place because he has some serious issues that should not allow him to leave the country until he's fixed them and solved them. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. Today has been a fun one to relive this story for you. I can laugh about it now, but I can assure you for a couple of weeks afterwards, I was a bit annoyed that I uh, had never received a text or the money to thank me. But um, yeah, that's the end of that one. Tomorrow at 5 p.m. UK time, the first fitness documentary of my 12-week body transformation will be live on the channel. So be sure to stay tuned for that. It's looking really, really good. I am putting so much energy into these videos, literally. Uh, so I hope you guys are gonna enjoy it. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. And if you wanna see more travel stories as well, I can't say they're all gonna be about me losing loads of money from helping a drunk guy, but there's a lot of fun ones out there. So if you do wanna hear them, be sure to let me know, and I will catch you all later. Enjoy the rest of the sunset. Bye-bye.